Okay then, let's do this as quickly as possible. So, first off, I'm going to add a new script uh, to the interact uh, node over here. I'm just going to call this script because it's literally just going to be the script. Um, it's going to be one line of code. So let's make that. Delete all that. All we're having is export var text. Export basically means it's unique to this object and it makes it interactable in the editor so we can edit that variable hook. So this array we want to set its size to two or however large you want it. We want to set them all to string and we'll set this to hello world and this one to hello again world. Uh, and then we're done. Rest of it is script. So let's open all of our scripts. First up, where? Uh, let's. Okay. So we want to first introduce a variable called can move. And this will be true. Basically, if the player can or can't move. Um, next up, we want to go to ready. We want to enable input, so we're going to go for set um, input, set process input to true, oh, not just TCV server, um, and then create the function for processing input. Um, so that's just input event. Next up, we want a boolean variable press. Um, there's probably a better way to do this, but we're going to stick it like this. So, uh, in input event, what we want to do is check if it is pressed or released. Okay, so if event dot is action pressed, UI interact. And if event dot is oops first off first second up is act event dot is action release UI interact and for here we're gonna have press equals true and here we're gonna have press equals false. And then over here we go, at the very bottom of our script we're going to press, set press to false because we want to be checking every frame for pressed one frame. So we only want press to be true for one frame and that is the frame where you press the key. Uh, next up we want to add can walk to this. So and can walk, can move even, and we want to change this else to elif can move. Next up, we want to give me a second. Uh, next up, we want to set the what happens when we found an interactable object. And what happens is we're just going to have to change this code to get node um, uh, Oh, sorry. No. All we have to do is change this bit of code here to uh, dictionary dot collider dot and then we're going to get the array variable, which we named text, I believe. So we want to get the node interact. So get node interact. And then text. Check if that's the right name. Yep. Uh, and then we're passing that to this over here. Okay. So dialog box. What are we going to add? We're going to add a new variable here called done printing. 
uh, equals false. Uh, we're going to add another pressed variable. And then we're going to change. Oh. Then we're just going to change this to an array. Uh, next to control, we want the current text, and this is positioned in the array as opposed to in the string. Okay. So in ready, we're also going to want to set uh, process this. Instead of processing all the inputs, we only want to process key inputs here. Funk process unhand sorry unhandled input unhandled key input and in there we're gonna have exactly the same code. So if key event dot is action Rest UI interact Aleph key event keep forgetting to do that dot is action release UI interact rest equals false and press equals true um okay then we're done that uh we want to set rest to false at the end of here uh next up we want to check if not done printing so if we aren't done printing the current block of text, then we want to check if we press the space bar. So when we reach the end of this segment of text in the array, we want to check um, if we're done printing. If we, if we reach the end of a block of text, then we want to wait for the user to press space. And then if the user press space, we move on to the next block of text. So then we'll set this to false. Uh, then we want to set the text label to empty. Dot set db code in blank. And then if the if we've passed the last block of text, then we just want to close the menu. Greater than or equal to text to print dot size and current text is equal to zero. Just reset all the variables for text to print equal to an empty array printing equals false set hidden equals true oh, no. true and then we want to set the player to be able to move yeah I set the yeah and another thing you want to do in the player so when the player is in a dialogue box you don't want him to move, do you? Um, so let's do that. And for that, we just want to set. Actually, no, we're setting up a, a dialog box code. So uh, get the node for the player world. So that's that root world slash player. Uh, if we rename the kinematic body to player, make sure when you rename stuff, sometimes it is no longer editable. Make sure it is. Just check that everything's right. Okay, player dot can move equals true. 
Yeah. Uh, now, first off, before we get into the actual, like, core of the code, or just editing it to adapt to it and run a set so the player can't move. So, get node slash root slash world slash player. And we want to set can move to false. Um, now then, this is now an array. Um, so we not only are we looking for the position in the string, but we also are looking for the position in the array. So first up, we want to add current text here. So we're getting the current text string, current char's character. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, and that's it. Now then, uh, text print dot length. Uh, arrays don't have dot length. They have dot size. But we're looking for the strings length. So it's just current text, and we're getting the string and we're checking its length okay um the text print dot size i use there for comparing because arrays use different things okay so when this is greater than we're done printing equals true now we this means we wait for the player to press space before moving on to the next all right. Uh, and we also want to add the current text up by one. Plus equals one. I think that's it. Let's see where the errors are. None. Hello world. Press space. And nothing happens. Let's see where those. Okay, first up, remove text print is equal to nothing, because we don't want that anymore. Uh, next up, we want to continue printing, so remove that as well, and that should work. So we can't move. And then that's done, and... Uh, okay, so what happened there was we instantly re-interacted with the... Uh, object after closing the dialog box. Watch the flash here. So for that, the fix is just going here and changing this to pressed. Uh, maybe I didn't explain why we need pressed in this, but this is why. Hello world. Hello again world. And we can move. How cool is that? Pretty cool. So to edit your dialog, all you want to go to is go to the interact section, go to the array, and you can edit it. Pretty cool stuff. So we could add a third line of text if we wanted to. We could call this, how are you doing? And then just run that. Hello world. Hello again world. How are you doing? And you can re-interact with it. Pretty cool stuff. So that's it. That's it. We're done. For the dialogue system. Moving on to other things. Uh, so what's the limitation of this dialogue system? Um, we're going to have to find a way to introduce options. So yes or no answers to certain things. So I'll have to figure out a way to do that. Um, yeah, maybe have each one be an array where the first array is each type is a string array. The first array is the question and the next two are the options. But I really don't know. Uh, I'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. See you next time.